This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol, and men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Your new machine is interfering with my radio, Pop. Don't be silly, Casupir. And don't call me Pop. What is the machine for, Professor Haggertiff? Translating the language of ants. I'm not interested in ants. Please, Pop, see if you can fix this. Oh, be jabers. It's cold in here. I am astonished you have an old-fashioned electric fire. Well, I like the look of it. How odd. The radio's working. It's gone wrong again. Oh, now it's all right. Every time I move, something happens to the music. I think your machine is causing it, Professor. Impossible. Yet you might be right. It looks as if it's changing the infrared rays from the fire into radio waves. Then you'd better turn it off. Please, Pop. How remarkable. I wonder how it works. And don't call me Pop. Did you enjoy your weekend, Colonel Rayburn? No, I worked nonstop. Is anything wrong? Plenty. We'll have to evacuate all the colonists on Pluto and close the mines. Why? Get Space Survey to throw a diagram on the screen. Then come in and I'll explain. Pluto takes 240 years to go around the sun. And even at its closest to the sun, it's still bitterly cold. But for the last 30 years, Pluto's been moving into the furthest part of its orbit, and it'll soon be too cold for anyone to live there. Can't the nuclear heating plant keep it warm? The freeze-up is affecting the machinery. But if Pluto's evacuated, we will not get any more plutonite. And without plutonite, we can't build gallospheres. It'll be the end of space patrol. Can Professor Haggerty help? He has a new machine that transforms heat waves into radio waves. If he could turn... Don't say it. I know what you mean. Marla, you're brilliant. How felicitous to receive a compliment from Colonel Rayburn. That's the story, Professor. The sun's so far from Pluto that by the time the rays reach it, they haven't any heat left. How can I help? With this, I want to take the infrared rays from the sun, turn them into radio waves, then beam them across to Pluto. When they reach Pluto, we turn them back into heat waves again. That means I must invent another machine to undo what this one does? Yes. Impossible. I don't know how this machine does it in the first place. You've got to find out. If you don't, Pluto will become a dead planet, and Space Patrol finished. It's good to be on Earth, Captain. I never want to see Pluto again. Nor do I. We Venusians prefer heat. Will Captain Larry Dart report to Colonel Rayburn? <laughs> Maybe he's going to send us back to Pluto. Want to come, Slim? I didn't join Space Patrol to be transformed into an iced lollipop. That reminds me. I'm hungry. Ah, there you are, Dart. What took you so long? Well, I haven't been long, Colonel. I came as soon as I got your message. Well, it seems as if I've been waiting for you for hours. But, Colonel, I just got in from Pluto. Sorry, Dart. I know I'm impatient, but... Something's happened and... Uh, something's always happening, isn't it, Colonel? Yes, Dart. Only this time, it's even more urgent than usual. I take it you're sending me out on another mission? You guessed right. Where's it to this time, sir? Our first stop is Professor Haggerty's lab. Marla, order my monobile, please. Come on, Dart.
Now, I'll explain the way my idea works. This is the sun. Here's Mercury, uh, which is the closest planet to it. And here is Pluto, which is the furthest away. That's why it's so cold. Now, we must set up one of my transmitters on Mercury. This will get the infrared rays from the sun and turn them into radio waves. Then this little bowl will beam the radio waves to Pluto. What happens then? This transmitter will shrink the radio waves back into heat waves again. I don't see why you have to go to all that trouble. Can't you get a transmitter to beam heat waves to Pluto without changing them into radio waves? My dear boy, you might be a captain of Space Patrol, but you know nothing at all about science. The heat waves wouldn't remain hot until they traveled as far as Pluto. That's why we must turn them into radio waves and beam them across space like that. I see. I suppose you want me to put up the transmitter on Pluto? No. Another Gallosphere is already on its way there to set one up. Your job is to put up the transmitter on Mercury. The boiling planet? If you don't want to go, I can't force you. Well, that's all right, Colonel. This is the kind of job I like. But just give Husky time to have one Earth meal before we leave. Good. I'll arrange to have all the necessary equipment loaded onto your Gallosphere. What sort of equipment? The transmitter, of course. <gasps> what a memory you have. I do not know how you can eat so much. I'm a Martian, and the Martians need plenty of food. Have some sausages, Slim. No, thank you. Venusians never consume sausages. I don't know why not. Sausages are wonderful. If you take my opinion, you need some. Can I have a sausage, Husky? All right. Hey, don't eat them all. Stop it. Stop it. What's all the noise? Gabble had eaten my food. Oh, that's too bad. Come on, Husky. Stop stuffing your face. It's time for takeoff. Can I come with you? No, Gabbler, you know the rules. Animals and birds aren't allowed in spaceships. But I was in the Gallosphere when we went to Mars. That was a very special occasion. Now, come on, fellas. Let's get going. Mason unit gaining speed. All in order. Ready to lift. Takeoff program starting now. Captain, in four and a half minutes, we will attain 66,000 miles an hour. Husky, boost the gravity repulsion field. I have already done so. Then let's go into the freezer. Gallosphere 347, calling control. Central control to Gallosphere 347. Come in, please. We're going into the freezer. I'm setting automatic time control to operate for three days, four hours. Message received. If an emergency arises, we will use the Zergon ray to switch off your time control. What's the news of Dart? He is still in the freezer. Fine. Get me Pluto, will you? I already have them on the sonar beam. You think of everything. A Venusian has the facility never to forget. Come in, Pluto. Colonel Rayburn on the sonar beam. Commander Brog here. The transmitter's been set up and we're ready to receive the radio waves from Mercury. Dart should have his transmitter up in 48 hours. What are conditions like? Terrible. The nuclear reactors have slowed down. If these transmitters don't work, we'll have to evacuate the planet. Have you enough spacecraft? I have only enough for half the men. You must send more. They're on their way. You'll get them in three months. But don't worry. I'm sure the transmitters will work. I'll be in touch with you later.
Commander. What is it? The nuclear heating stopped. What? It's broken down completely. How much reserve heat have we got left? Enough to last 18 hours. After that, we'll be dead. Let's get out of here. We've got spaceships. Not enough. 3,000 men will have to be left here to die. At least save as many as you can. We've got to give the transmitters a chance. I'll call Raven. 18 hours of heat left? What a disaster. Marla? Yes, Colonel? Is Captain Dart still in the freezer? He has just come out and is on the video screen. Good. We're nearing Mercury, Colonel. Don't waste time when you get there. Pluto will be frozen solid in 18 hours. You must get your transmitter working before then. I don't think we can. You must. The lives of 3,000 men depend on you. 18 hours to set up the transmitter? Impossible. We haven't got 18 hours. It takes five hours for radio waves to travel from Mercury to Pluto, so our transmitter must start working in 13 hours' time. That's even more impossible. Mercury's on the screen now. It's not the place I choose for a vaccination. You mean vacation. What's our speed, Slim? 20,000 miles an hour. Switch to primary drive. We'll land on the dark side. It's cooler. Then we'll load the equipment on our hover jets. They'll never be able to lift it. Yes, they will. Gravity here is one-third what it is on Earth. We're approaching the dark side now. I'll switch on robot control. Robot control doesn't want to land here. That means something's wrong. Looks like a hole. What happens now? We keep hovering till the robot eye decides it's safe for us to land. Ah, it's all right now. I hope I can walk in these shoes. What are the spikes for? To keep your feet cooler. Keep your walkie-talkie switched on all the time. We've only 12 hours left. Dart should have unloaded the equipment by now. Shall I call him? No. I don't want to waste his time. How many hours has he got left? Eleven. All the equipment is ready, Captain. Prepare to lift. Wait for me! We'll never fix the transmitter in time. We must, otherwise 3,000 men will freeze to death. The word free sounds wonderful. That reminds me. What stops this equipment melting? It's been specially treated, like our spacesuits. If we weren't wearing them, we'd fall alive in 20 seconds. I'm not surprised. The sun looks near enough to touch. Come on. We must set the transmitter up on the highest point. First, make the holes to set in the pylons. Right. Pass me the gamma ray drill, Husky. Watch your step. There's very little gravity. I forgot. What do I do? Unload the pylons. Ten hours to go, Colonel. I hate this waiting. already frozen to death in one of the mines. I hope Captain Dart is hurrying. <laughs> it's getting colder. There are nine hours to go. These girders are so light, I can't lift them with one finger. That's because they're made of plutonite. Now you see why it's so valuable. How much longer have we got? Four hours. The ice is 
is getting thicker every second. If we don't leave soon, we'll all die. Our spaceships won't start if they get any colder. We must wait. There's still three hours to go. I don't like the look of this transmitter. What's wrong with it? It's not firm enough. We've set it as far into the ground as we can. I know, but I don't think the ground's firm enough. Look, one push and it's already shaking. I'm sure I could knock it over completely. Look out! The whole base is giving way. Come on, jump for it. Well, there goes the transmitter. What can we do? Build another one. And this time, we'll have to set the legs deep in the ground. Our gamma guns won't dig deep enough. I know. We must make some holes with dynamite. I will fetch it. We haven't much time. Two hours to go. Larry will never make it. He must. Think of those men freezing to death on Pluto. It's all ready for you, Captain. The dynamite is in each hole. Move out of the way, then, and I'll set them off. There. That's done it. Come on, boys. We've no time to waste. What's happened to you? I'm about ten foot below the ground. Drop me a rope. I'll go and fetch one. Well, we know one thing. We've made the holes deep enough. This time, the transmitter won't collapse. One hour to go. Dart will never do it. We've just had a signal from Dart. The transmitter's up and he's testing it now. I'll let you know the moment it starts. Is on soon, otherwise it will be too late. How are you doing, Captain? I've just got my fixing on Pluto, ready to switch on. Wonderful. Pressure must build up for 45 seconds before the radio waves begin transmitting. I'm going to signal Rayburn that everything's all right. It isn't. The transmitter is not working. I'll go up and see what's wrong. Let me go. You look tired. I'll go. Venusians are more used to heat. Be careful, Slim. few minutes late starting. It'll mean death to the men on Pluto. Their reserve heating finishes in five hours and nine minutes. That means we've got nine minutes to get the transmitter working. How are you doing, Slim? I have located the fault. Should I come up and help you? I can manage. There. It is ready. We've made it, Captain. The transmitter's working. It will be in 45 seconds. Come down, Slim, or you'll get a dose of radio waves. They're not harmful. These would be. Hurry. There's only 30 seconds left. Very well. Captain. What's wrong? My shoe is caught in one of the girders. I, I cannot move. There's only 25 seconds of build-up left. Turn off the transmitter. Impossible, Captain. I cannot reach the lever. Let him take his shoe off. He can't. It's part of his spacesuit. 
Don't worry, Slim. I'm coming up. Stay where you are, Captain. There are only ten seconds left. I'm not gonna let you burn. No. No, Captain. It, it's dangerous. Ah! I'm free! Jump, Slim. It's your only chance. It's too high. I'll be killed. No, you won't. The gravity. Oh, of course. That was a close haircut, all right. A close shave, you mean? Never do I want such excitement again. Neither do I. But at least Pluto's saved. Whew. Let's go back to the Galosphere before we get fried. Talking of fried, I could do with some chips. You and your stomach. <laughs> Much longer, Commander. Every single mine is unworkable. What about the nuclear heaters? They have almost stopped. This cold is so terrible that unless we get out of here, we'll all freeze to death. Please, Commander, let's go. We can't. We must wait. That's the solar beam. It must be Earth calling us. The transmitter is working on Mercury. Your worries are over, Commander. I'll tell my men at once. Thank you, Colonel. I never believed you'd do it. I didn't do it. It was Larry Dart and his crew. They are the ones who saved you. I hope you will thank them for us. They have saved our lives. They only did their duty, Commander. They are members of Space Patrol. Yeah.